In the first part of this lesson, you are going to understand how when we are multiplying by multiples of 10, there is a shift pattern in the digits. So let's start off with $1. If you have $1, then you have one $1 bill. So looking at our place value chart, I put a 1 in the 1's place of the chart. If we multiply that 1 by 10, you know that 1 times 10 is just going to be $10. If we put the number 10 into our place value chart, we would have 1 10 and 0 1s. What you should notice and learn in this lesson is that multiplying by multiples of 10, remember multiples of 10 are 10, 100, 1000, and so on, the one, the digit that is not a zero, shifted one place to the left, and we filled in the remaining places with zeros. Let's look at another example. If we started again with one dollar, except this time we're going to multiply that one dollar by 100. Well, you know that one times any number is going to be that number, so we would end up with $100. If I fill those numbers into the place value chart, we started with 1, which is 1 in the 1's place. Now we have 100, and I know that that's 1 in the 100's place, no 10's, and no 1's. Notice when we multiplied by 100, the digit that is not zero shifted two places to the left, and we filled in the remaining places with zeros. Now we're going to look at taking that same $1 bill and multiplying it by 1,000. We would end up with $1,000 that we can fill in in the place value chart. We started with one $1 bill. After multiplying by 1,000, we have $1,000. The digit one shifted this time one, two, three places to the left, and we filled in the remaining places with zeros. The general idea is when you take a number and you multiply it by a multiple of 10, the digits don't change, they just shift to the left as many multiples of 10 that you are multiplying it by. In this case, there are three zeros in the number 1000, so we shifted the digit 1 to the left three times. The same idea works with other numbers besides 1. So let's say that we started with 243. If we multiply 243 by 10, we will still have a shift in the digits. Let's start by putting 243 into the place value chart. 200s, 410s, and 31s. Multiplying 243 by 10 will just be a shift in the digits, and because there is one zero in the number 10, or it is one multiple of 10, each of the digits in the number 243 are going to shift to the left one place. So the two will shift to the thousands place. The four will shift to the hundreds place. The three will shift to the tens place. And then the remaining place, the ones place, must be filled in because we can't leave any places blank in between our whole numbers and the decimal place. So we will put a zero in the uh, ones place for an answer of 2,430. Let's look at another example. This time, I'm going to start with a decimal number, 3 and 62 hundredths. If we multiply 3 and 62 hundredths by 100, since 100 is just a multiple of 10, I know that the digits in 3 and 62 hundredths won't change, but they'll shift to the left as many multiples of 10 as we have. 
we have two multiples of 10, and I know that because there are two zeros. 100 is 10 times 10, another way to think about it. First, let's put 3 and 62 hundredths into our place value chart. 3 whole and 62 hundredths. Since each digit will shift to the left two places, I'll start with my ones place. 1, 2, 3. The 6 will go two places. 1, 2. The 2 will go two places. 1, 2 put my 2. Now, since I have 362 whole, there is no reason to insert any zeros because there is nothing, um, there are no blank places in between the whole numbers and the decimal number parts. The same thing works if you start with a decimal number with no whole numbers. This number says 51 hundredths. First, let's put our number into the place value chart. 51 hundredths. Multiplying this number by 10 will shift each of the digits to the left because our place values get larger to the left by 10. One place. So the 5 will shift one place over to the 1's place. The 1 will shift one place over to the 10's place. And now we have to keep our decimal place, our decimal, excuse me, exactly where it is fixed in between the ones and the tenths place for an answer of five and one tenth. The generalization that you should come away with, remember generalization is just the general rule, is that when you multiply any number n by 10, the digits shift left one place. One zero in the number 10, they shift one place to the left. Multiplying n by 100 results in the digits Shift left two places. There are two zeros in the number 100, therefore the digits shift left two places. And then this pattern would continue, multiplying any number times 1,000, the digits would shift to the left three places, times 10,000, four places. If there are any blank places in between the whole number and the decimal place, you need to insert zeros into those blank places.